Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about Canva, more specifically mind maps and infographics. Uh, we're going to start with mind maps and I'm going to show you a way that you can connect the two into one project, which is kind of cool, kind of awesome. Uh, we'll start with mind maps. You could either type it in here or you can just find the mind map uh, template option down here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create a blank one. When you click on create a blank one, it's still going to give you templates over here. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. You can search these uh, mind maps. Uh, you can search the style of it after you select it as well. So any of these mind maps that we want, we could just click on it. It's going to bring it over to our uh, canvas here where we can edit that mind map. One thing I want to show you is right now, this is a very large Canva uh, size. This blank area here is very large. We could resize this. If we want to print this out uh, to be a standard sheet of paper, we could resize it. As we do that, it's going to limit the number of options we have because these are all formatted for this certain size. Uh, so we go to resize. Not a lot of people know what 1920 pixels are, but I believe it's somewhere around uh, 20 inches, which is going to be larger than our standard sheet of paper. So what we could do here is go to inches. That will tell us how... Um, the dimensions of it in, in inches. I recently did an 11 by 8.5. I think I'll do that here. So we'll go 11 uh, by 8.5. And, and then down here we'll just hit resize. And as you can see, it eliminates the total possibilities that we have. But this is perfectly fine. Uh, I like what I see here. I could use something in here. So I'm going to go to this one right here. This is a mind map for a new application. Uh, this is going to be changed. I think the colors are hideous, so I probably would not keep that. Uh, you could just go up, change the color very, very quickly. Uh, and, you know, just with that one color change, I like it a little better. Uh, you could change the text if you want. So I'm just going to put 1920s up here. Um, and then down here, I'm going to go themes of the 1920s. So this is how I'm going to switch this up a little bit. Uh, themes of the 1920s, uh, we can bold it, we could change the color of the font, we could change the color of anything that you highlight here. Alright, so we have themes of the 1920s. So maybe at the beginning of my class I'm going to talk to students a little bit about uh, what are the main themes and then I'll have them do some research. So initial research, maybe the students come up with uh, marathon dancing. Uh, prohibition is another one that we could talk about here. So as we type these in uh, and they fill up all the areas around, after that's done they could select which one that they want to go deeper into their research. Okay, so if they select marathon dancing, what they could do then is they could go out to Canva and they could select an infographic template that they are going to change up. So this will be, uh, they could change this to the Roaring 1920s and then Prohibition here and then they can go change all the infographics uh, or everything about this infographic there whether it's the icon and whatever to match uh, prohibition and what they're going to talk about when they're done with this they could go up to share and they can uh, just copy the link which is up here put anyone with the link and access it copy the link and then we go back into here for prohibition and they select it and they go up to link it and paste that link in and now it's hyperlinked. So anytime their classmates go to prohibition, they can hyper or go see that uh, infographic that they just created on that. And this is a way to get kind of from a graphic organizer. Uh, it's almost like a study slide here where Students can interact with each one of these themes of the 1920s and uh, get more information about it. So they click on it and it will take them straight to their infographic. All right. 
Since we're about five minutes in, what I want to do here is I want to just go over a couple of different ideas uh, that um, I came up with with some graphic organizers. Uh, this is the template that is offered by Canva, uh, the SWOT analysis. All right, if I was doing paragraph writing, I could change this to the meal plan uh, paragraph writing. So here, this is probably good enough to put in a classroom as a poster. But we could also give this as a template link to our students and uh, ask them to fill out a paragraph that they're writing that they want to be looked at by their peers here. So instead of having the definition here, they would just put their main idea here, their evidence here, analysis, and linkage. All right? And then maybe down below, they just make another text box and uh, they put the whole paragraph. And each part of the paragraph, they identify it by the color of that text. All right, so this is a way to bring meal plan to life. Here's another one called Brainstorm. All right, so this one, they have idea, plan, solution, and problem. All right, in science, I like to do claims, evidence, reasoning. So maybe we start with a question in the beginning here, right here. Uh, the claim is the answer to the question. And then they're going to present their evidence here. Remember, all this can be linked, so they can kind of look at it, and it's all in one place, organized in the same place. So the evidence is here. So maybe they have a table and a graph and some pictures here. The reasoning is what connects the evidence to the claim. And then finally, they provide their sources that they use to help with this, uh, this analysis or this uh, lab that they did. The last one I really enjoy and I changed this one up a lot. This one uh, started out as a more of a self-reflection uh, piece here, but I changed it up so it is more of a progress tracker. So you would put your name, your grade, circle the quarter. So this would be for each student. Each student would make their own, share it with the teacher. Maybe the teacher would make it and share it with the student. Uh, they list a couple goals that they have for the quarter. And then uh, here, since we have a rotating drop, we will only see students up to four times a week. So what I did is uh, for the 10 weeks, I created four spots for them. And uh, here, basically, they're just going to say what they accomplished in that class period. Okay, so I think this is important when we do those uh, projects that might last a long time in some of our elective courses. I know in my elective courses, we have projects that last four or five days. So here I can easily just go in and look at every student and see what they were up to that day if I didn't have time to check in with them or maybe they were even out and they worked on it you know, at home, I could see what they were working on and kind of see where they are in that project uh, for a progress tracker here. So I like this one as well. Obviously, you're not getting a whole lot of detail here. Uh, you might just get worked on 1-1 one uh, of activity 2, and that's all that you, you got there. Or if they finish something, they could just hyperlink the project. Uh, that would be another way of keeping track, just hyperlinking everything, and that would be pretty cool as well. So this is the infographic uh, and mind map tutorial. I showed you just a, a brief version of the infographic. We'll get more into another video. Uh, for infographics, but I really like the mind maps. I like the templates and the how much you can customize them in Canva. So if you have any questions or you have a particular use that you want for uh, mind maps or infographics and you want to talk about them, please make sure that you, uh, you know, come up and see us or shoot us a comment or an email.